Hi, I'm Layan, a 28-year-old elementary school teacher from Nashville. Before I continue with my story, please like and subscribe to the channel. Trust me, you won't want to miss what's coming next. It all started when I gave birth to my beautiful baby girl, Mia, at Oakwood Memorial Hospital. My husband Ryan and I were over the moon. The delivery was tough, but holding Mia in my arms made it all worth it. She's perfect, Ryan whispered, tears in his eyes. I nodded, but something felt... off. I couldn't put my finger on it. In the room next to ours, I overheard a commotion. The nurse rushed in and I caught snippets of their conversation. It's a miracle, Mr. and Mrs. Baker, after all this time. Later, I learned that the Bakers, a wealthy couple, had finally had a living child after losing several babies. I felt happy for them, but little did I know how their joy would impact my life. During our stay, I noticed Nurse Valerie acting strangely. She seemed nervous around me, avoiding eye contact. Is everything okay? I asked her once. Of course, dear, just busy, you know how it is, she replied, scurrying away. When we got home, my unease grew. As I gazed at Mia, something nagged at me. Her skin seemed darker than ours. I mentioned it to Ryan. Babe, you're overthinking it, he said, bouncing Mia gently. Babies change a lot in the first few weeks. Remember what Dr. Thompson said? I tried to shake it off, but the feeling persisted. Hoping to find some support, I joined a local mother's group. That's where I met Zoe, who quickly became a confidant. Over coffee one day, I confessed my worries. Am I going crazy, Zoe? I can't shake this feeling that something's not right with Mia. Zoe listened intently, her brow furrowed. You're not crazy, Leon. A mother's intuition is powerful. Have you considered looking into the hospital records? Just for peace of mind? I hesitated. Isn't that a bit extreme? Not if it helps you sleep at night, Zoe replied, squeezing my hand. You need to trust your gut. As days passed, my doubts grew. Mia's features seemed to become less like ours. Ryan continued to dismiss my concerns, but I couldn't let it go. One night, as I rocked Mia to sleep, I made a decision. I had to know the truth, no matter how painful it might be. I'd go back to the hospital and dig deeper. Little did I know this decision would unravel a web of secrets that would change our lives forever. The journey ahead would test my strength, my marriage, and everything I thought I knew about motherhood and love. The next day, I headed to Oakwood Memorial, heart pounding. I clutched a thank you card, my flimsy excuse to be there. As I approached the maternity ward, raised voices caught my attention. This wasn't the deal, James. It was Nurse Valerie, sounding frantic. Keep your voice down, a man hissed. I peeked around the corner. It was Mr. Baker. I can't live with this. Your baby was supposed to... Valerie trailed off. But she didn't, did she? So stick to the plan. I ducked away, mind reeling. What plan? What deal? At home, I couldn't shake what I'd heard. I started digging online, searching for anything about the Bakers. What I found chilled me to the bone. Four stillbirths in five years. The odds were astronomical. Ryan, we need to talk, I said that night. What's up, babe? I think... I think we need to do a DNA test on Mia. His face fell. Leon, not this again. Mia is ours. Please, Ryan, I need to know. He sighed but agreed. The wait for results was agonizing. When they came, my world shattered. This can't be right, Ryan muttered, staring at the paper. There must be a mistake. But I knew. Deep down, I'd always known. Mia wasn't ours. I marched back to the hospital, fury and heartbreak warring inside me. I cornered Nurse Valerie in an empty room. Tell me the truth, I demanded. What did you do? She crumbled, tears streaming down her face. I'm so sorry. Mr. Baker, he... He paid me, a lot of money. To do what? I pressed, even though I feared the answer. To switch the babies, she whispered. He was convinced his child would die like the others. He couldn't bear it again. I felt sick. So Mia is... The baker's daughter. Yes. My legs gave out and I sank to the floor. And my baby? 
with the bakers. She's healthy, thriving. I didn't know whether to laugh or cry. My baby was alive, but in another family's arms. And Mia, sweet Mia, wasn't mine by blood, but was mine in every other way that mattered. Why? I choked out. Why would you do this? Valerie looked away. The money. My son needed surgery. I was desperate. I stood up, anger replacing shock. That doesn't make it right. You've destroyed lives. I know, she sobbed. I'll turn myself in. Just, please, my son. I left her there, my mind a whirlwind. Back home, I paced our living room. We have to go to the police, Ryan said, his voice hollow. I looked at Mia, sleeping peacefully in her crib. Not yet. We need proof. It's our word against theirs, and the bakers have money and influence. So what do we do? I took a deep breath. We gather evidence, and we find our biological daughter. Ryan pulled me close. How did this happen to us, Layan? What are we going to do about Mia? I hugged him back, tears flowing freely. I don't know. I love her so much, Ryan. But there's another baby out there. Our baby. As night fell, I made a promise to both Mia and my unknown biological child. I would fight for justice, for truth. No matter how much it hurt, no matter how hard it would be, I would make this right. But first, I needed a plan. The bakers wouldn't give up easily, and I had a feeling this was just the beginning of a long, painful battle. As I watched Ryan gently rock Mia to sleep, I steeled myself for what was to come. Our family's future hung in the balance, and I was determined to uncover the whole truth, no matter the cost. The next few weeks were a blur of sleepless nights and tear-filled days. Ryan and I were torn between our love for Mia and the desperate need to find our biological daughter. We decided to hire a private investigator, Jack, to dig deeper into the bakers and nurse Valerie. We need concrete evidence, I told Jack. Something that'll stand up in court. Jack nodded. I'll do my best. But these people have money and influence. It won't be easy. While Jack worked, I couldn't resist doing some digging of my own. I found the baker's social media accounts and there she was, Emma, my biological daughter. My heart ached as I scrolled through pictures of her first smile. Look at her, Ryan, I whispered, showing him my phone. She has your eyes. Ryan's voice cracked. She's beautiful. But Layan, what about Mia? I looked over at Mia playing with her toys. I don't know. I love them both. A week later, Jack called with news. I've got something. Mr. Baker's been bribing officials for years. Not just at the hospital. We're talking city planners, health inspectors, you name it. Armed with Jack's evidence, Ryan and I marched into Oakwood Memorial to confront the administration. The hospital director, Dr. Patel, listened to our story with a grave expression. These are serious allegations, he said. We'll need to investigate internally. Internal investigation? Ryan scoffed. You mean cover it up? Dr. Patel's face hardened. Mr. and Mrs. Harrison, perhaps we can come to an arrangement. The hospital is prepared to offer a settlement. I felt my blood boil. A settlement? You think you can buy our silence? Mrs. Harrison, please understand. This could ruin the hospital's reputation. Your reputation, I exploded. What about our family? What about Emma? As we left, Ryan turned to me. They're going to bury this, Layan. We need to go public. I nodded, an idea forming. I know just the person. I called my old college friend Sarah, now an investigative journalist. Sarah, I've got a story for you. It's big. We met at a cafe and I spilled everything. Sarah's eyes widened as she took notes. This is explosive, Layan, she said. Are you sure you want to do this? It'll change everything. I thought of Emma, of Mia, of all the other families who might have been affected. I'm sure, I said firmly. It's time the truth came out. As I left the cafe, my phone buzzed. It was a text from an unknown number. Back off or you'll regret it. JB. James Baker. My hands shook, but I steeled myself. There was no turning back now. That night, as Ryan and I put Mia to bed, the weight of our decision hung heavy. 
Are we doing the right thing? Ryan asked softly. I looked at Mia's peaceful face, then at the photo of Emma on my phone. We have to, I whispered. For both of them. As we lay in bed, unable to sleep, I couldn't help but wonder, how would this all end? Would we get Emma back? Would we lose Mia? The uncertainty was killing me, but one thing was clear. The fight for justice had only just begun. Sarah's article hit like a bomb. My phone wouldn't stop ringing and news vans camped outside our house. The story was everywhere. Layan, have you seen this? Ryan called out, pointing at the TV. Mr. Baker was holding a press conference, denying everything. These accusations are baseless, Baker said, his face red. We'll pursue legal action against these slanderous claims. But his threats were empty. The evidence was too strong. Within days, the police were involved, and the real story unraveled fast. I'll never forget the day Nurse Valerie testified. She looked broken as she confessed everything. Mr. Baker paid me $500,000 to switch the babies, she said, her voice barely a whisper. I, I'm so sorry. The courtroom erupted. I felt Ryan's hand tighten around mine. The next few months were a whirlwind of legal battles. DNA tests confirmed what we already knew. Emma was ours. Mia was the baker's. The judge ordered psychological evaluations for all of us. This is an unprecedented case, our lawyer explained. The court's primary concern is the well-being of both children. The hardest part was explaining everything to Mia. She was only three, but she knew something was wrong. Mommy, why are you crying? She asked one night. I held her tight. Because I love you so much, sweetie. No matter what. The court's decision came down like a hammer. A gradual transition plan for both girls. My heart broke and soared at the same time. The first meeting with Emma was surreal. She looked so much like Ryan. Hi, Emma, I said, my voice shaking. I'm... I'm your mom. She looked at me curiously, then smiled. It was a start. Mr. Baker got 15 years for his crimes. Mrs. Baker, who claimed ignorance, got probation and mandatory counseling. Nurse Valerie lost her license and faced her own legal battles. The transition wasn't easy. There were tears, tantrums, and moments of doubt. But slowly we found our rhythm. Two years later, we're still figuring things out. Emma lives with us now, but we make sure she stays connected to the Bakers. And Mia? She splits her time between both families. Today is the girl's fifth birthday. We're having a joint party, both families together. As I watch Emma and Mia blow out their candles surrounded by both sets of parents, I feel a mix of emotions. There's still pain, still moments of what if. But there's also joy, love, and a strange kind of peace. Mrs. Baker Carroll catches my eye across the room. We share a small smile. We're not friends, not really, but we're connected in a way few could understand. Make a wish, girls, Ryan calls out. As the kids giggle and dive into their cake, I make my own wish. For healing, for forgiveness, for our unconventional family to find its way. It's not perfect. It's messy and complicated and sometimes it still hurts. But looking around at all of us, the bakers, Ryan, the girls, I realize something. This is our family now. All of us. And somehow we'll make it work. As the party winds down, Emma tugs on my hand. Mom, can Mia sleep over tonight? I look at Carol, who nods. Of course, sweetie, I say. And in that moment, I know. We're going to be okay. All of us. The story has come to an end. Now I have a question for you. If you were in my shoes, would you have exposed the truth about the baby switch? Knowing it could potentially separate Mia from the only family she'd known? Or would you have kept the secret to maintain the status quo? This is a complex ethical dilemma with no easy answers. What would you have done and why? Share your thoughts in the comments below. If this story resonated with you, please consider giving it a like. And if you want to hear more stories that explore the complexities of family, love, and justice, hit that subscribe button. Your support means the world to us and helps us continue sharing these thought-provoking narratives. Thanks for listening, and I can't wait to hear your perspectives.